Welcome back to the Quran Speak. Now we'll be talking about Zamzam. So what is the story behind Zamzam? What are the virtues? What are the benefits? Why are Muslims so enthused about Zamzam? So Brother Shabir, let's answer this question about Zamzam. You know, tell us the story about Zamzam. You know, what is this water that you know, Muslims you know, speak about and talk about? Yeah, well, the Zamzam actually is the name of a well that uh, is situated in Mecca, just, um, uh, just outside the Kaaba, the sacred mosque where Muslims uh, gather for pilgrimage. Uh, the, the story is that uh, this well was actually formed uh, when Ishmael was a baby. We know from the book of Genesis that uh, Abraham uh, took his wife, uh, the, the Bible says the, his concubine Hagar, and uh, her son Ishmael, his son, Abraham's son, uh, and uh, left them in, in a barren uh, desert. Uh, the Bible says that uh, he settled them at uh, Beersheba. Uh, Beersheba in, actually is uh, in Arabic Be'ar Saba. It's uh, actually seven, uh, a place of seven wells. Uh, in, in, in the Islamic tradition, we have it that uh, at the time Ishmael was a baby, and uh, when his mother and, uh, and he, Ishmael, were settled in, in a barren uh, region, Abraham was doing this by the command of God. And he uh, w was not fully aware of what would happen as a result of this. She was not quite aware. They didn't know what the plan of God was. We can see now in hindsight that the plan of God was that uh, in that region, a, a great world religion will be born and the spiritual light of guidance will shine from there to the rest of the world and people will gather for pilgrimage in the millions from every corner uh, of our globe as we are seeing now. But at the time, they didn't know uh, what was the plan of God, and it would seem pointless in a way. Here is a barren desert. Mm -hmm. Why are you going to settle a mother and child here where there is no sign of, proof, of any uh, means of sustenance? Uh, but uh, they prayed to God. Abraham prayed uh, to God to give provision to his family mm -hmm. and to cause the hearts of people to be inclined towards his family. And uh, the, uh, the mother of Ishmael also uh, had confidence in God according to the Muslim tradition. She said that if this is the command of God to leave us here, then certainly he will not leave us to perish. So Abraham left the scene and uh, the mother used up whatever provisions uh, she uh, had uh, with her um, provided by Abraham until eventually she had no food and no water, mm. nor did she have enough uh, milk in her breast to nurse the baby. Uh, so she went up uh, in a nearby mountain uh, or a hillock to uh, look around to see if there is any passing caravan, anyone who might be able to provide some water for her and her child, especially for her child. Uh, but she saw no one. Uh, then she uh, descended and, and went uh, a little distance and uh, ascended another little um, hill to, again, use that as a vantage point. But again, she saw no one, and she went back and forth between these two hills seven times, according to the Islamic tradition. These hills uh, still do exist. They're referred to as the Mountain Safa and the Mountain Marwa. Uh, Muslims, uh, in their pilgrimage to this day, uh, continue to mimic the efforts of this woman to find water for her baby by climbing up uh, Safa and then coming down, going all the way to Marwa, back and forth seven times. And they even run a part of the way to mimic the, the actions uh, of this blessed woman. Uh, but uh, it is uh, noted in the Islamic tradition that as she was going back and forth, eventually she heard a voice. And uh, it, it turned out that this was the angel Gabriel who had descended mm -hmm. on, uh, onto the scene. And uh, he struck uh, the earth with his wing. And where he struck the earth, the uh, water began to gush forth. Some of the traditions have it that uh, where the baby lay and the baby began to rub his feet against the mm -hmm. soil, that is where the water eventually began, began to uh, pour out from, from the earth. Now when she saw this water coming out like this, she began to try to gather the water, mm -hmm. maybe by pressing the earth around it to, to, to contain it. And uh, the, uh, she, she was saying to it, zam, zam, as if that means stop, like stop, hold on mm. there. And uh, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is reported to have said that had she not gathered the water like that, this well would have flowed throughout the entire earth. Uh, to this day, that well continues to flow, and Muslim pilgrims from all over the world gather there and drink from that well. 
Uh, so it, it is remarkable that uh, that ancient well mm. uh, from uh, about 1800 uh, BC uh, still continues to flow with water and it still continues to uh, be a source of uh, spiritual blessing and nourishment for, for the pilgrims in the hot desert region. Okay, so do most Muslims consider that as, you know, their, their holy water or is it, you know, just regular water? Like, we understand that there's a prophetic story behind it, but... Yes, well, because of its um, uh, origins in the life of uh, Abraham and, and Ishmael, who are two prophets of God, mm -hmm. um, naturally, we, we uh, hold that uh, whole area in high esteem and, and the well itself connected with Ishmael as it, as it is. Uh, but there is also a hadith of the Prophet, peace be upon him, which says that uh, if one drinks from the well of, of Zamzam, then uh, whatever a dua or supplication he mm. or she makes will be fulfilled. Mm. So typically, uh, Muslims uh, make a simple prayer uh, when they drink from that uh, well, a prayer that is noted to be one of the prayers of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him himself. Allahumma inni asaluka ilman nafi'a wa rizqan wasi'a wa shifa'an min kulli da'a. Uh, oh, oh God, we, I ask you for uh, useful knowledge and uh, uh, ample provisions and a healing from every disease. Hmm. Well, thank you very much for that. You're welcome. We'll be back with the infallibility of prophets. Do they make mistakes or are they perfect? Stay tuned, everyone.